Hey guys, my name is Jordi Van de Putt and I'm a filmmaker and video editor for over 10 years now after I graduated from film school. Now what I mostly do is try to recreate visual effects or film techniques from Hollywood films, from music videos, etc. And then I show my creative process on YouTube. Now, that has always been a passion for me, to just share my experiences with the world and inspire enthusiasts. So that is why I'm very excited to be a judge again for the MSI Creator Awards 2021. There are three categories and I'll be the judge for the film category, which includes making a short film or a creative work, something with visual effects. Doesn't really matter as long as you shoot something Something and then digitally edit it afterwards. And this year's theme is technology meets aesthetics. And you can interpret that the way that you want to. And the way that I see it is just quite literally. You know, back in the day, you would stuck your computer underneath your desk. It's not something beautiful that you would put on your desk. But these days, you know, things have changed. We got wearable technology like smartwatches, we got smartphones, we got beautiful computers these days like the MSI P100 series which you can put on your desk. It can be part of your decoration at home. And that is what I really love about the Prestige series. Just for an example, at home, I've got the P100X and I've got it set on this white desk together with this keyboard right here, this mouse as well, and their brand new monitor. It's all white on a white desk and that fits in my white interior. Now, I love that very much. And apart from the aesthetics, what's inside of that computer is just beast hardware. We got the latest technology inside of this computer right here, allowing me to seamlessly work with Adobe After Effects and Premiere Pro without having to worry about stability and performance. And when I'm on the run, I can actually switch over to my Creator 15 laptop, which is also a workstation laptop. So I don't need to worry when I'm going to take a project off from this desktop with me on the road, because this laptop has equally performance, which is really cool. It has an eight core processor, an RTX 2080 inside. So this laptop is a beast to work with and I just love it. But that's not what we're going to work with on this tutorial, because yes, this is actually a tutorial video. I made a video as well for the MSI Creator Awards, not to participate, unfortunately, but to inspire you guys. So let's first check it out and then I'm going to show you guys how I made one of the visual effects in that video. Alright guys, hope that you've enjoyed that video. Now we're going to dive into Adobe After Effects. But before we're going to do that, I first like to remind you that you can participate with the Creator Awards as well. The deadline is the May 31st, so be fast. You can win some really awesome prizes. All of the information can be found on our webpage. Alright, so we're here in After Effects and as you can see, I got four clips in my composition. What we're going to create is the GPU flying out of this case and just kind of like floating there. So what I did was actually I shot this with a motion controlled camera. And that way I was able to create the same shot four times exactly the same. Now what does that mean? Whenever we're going to go a little bit forward in time, you'll see that when I'm going to disable one of these layers that they match perfectly. So I got one shot with a lid on it, one without a lid, we can see the insides. Here is a shot of the empty computer where the GPU is outside and one where the GPU is floating. And all of these shots and their movement match exactly the same. Now, if you don't have one of these motion controlled systems, don't worry, just shoot from a tripod and you can do the exact same thing. All right, first things first, and that is cutting out the GPU so that we can remove the wires and everything. Now, because I have a moving shot, I'm gonna have to rotor brush this. If you are shooting static, you can just very simply draw a mask around this. So for now, I'm going to double click on my floating GPU layer. Let's just go to the beginning of that clip. And I'm going to go right here and choose the rotor brush tool. Now, if you click, you can kind of draw this green line. And that way you're saying select this part. And if you hold down your alt key, you can draw some red lines. And with that, you're saying don't select those parts. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit right here to really make sure that we've got the GPU select it. All right, looking good. One last thing that I want to do, and that is making sure 
that we definitely don't have these chords selected because they shouldn't be there. That's movie magic right there. All right, and what we have to do right now is just simply hit the space bar. There you go. And what After Effects is going to do right now is just kind of adjust your mask over time, your rotor brush, and you can see it kind of like wiggle here on the right side. If that happens, don't worry, just uh, pause and you start drawing again because I see a spot right there as well. You know, so you can always adjust over time. So just hit space bar again and it's going to calculate again, etc. So you just kind of go a little bit back and forward while After Effects is doing that. All right, so while this is rendering in the background, I want to answer a few questions that MSI provided me. And one of those questions is a very good one. What advice do I have to beginners who would like to start in this field? Well, visual effects or, or video editing in general can be very overwhelming when you're starting out. So at first, don't bother these programs too much. Start with something that you feel comfortable with. If that is iMovie or Windows Video Editor, just start with that. It really doesn't matter which kind of tool that you work with. Very important is that you create stuff. Start shooting stuff. Have an idea in your mind and just start you know, editing those videos with tools that you feel comfortable with. And once you feel that you are at a certain ceiling, that your software is giving you limitations, only then start looking for other programs. Because the one thing that you want to avoid is that your tool set is going to overwhelm you and therefore you lose interest in your passion. All right, next question, and that is, what are my hobbies? Uh, very interesting, because I, I don't have that much hobbies. I try to skateboard a little bit here and there, in the studio, actually. Uh, but I think my biggest hobby, apart from making videos, is, is gaming. Uh, I, I play a couple of shooters, some MMOs, uh, which I can also do on the beautiful P100, because yes, this is suitable for gaming as well. The hardware is kind of similar. So games run at 4K, high settings, perfectly, super smooth. Um, so yeah, those are kind of my hobbies. All right, I see that my rendering is almost complete right here. So I'm just going to answer one more question. And that is, who is my favorite content creator? Well, obviously, Cinecom, but I can't say that. So <laughs> I'm going to go with Ryan Conley from Film Rights. I've been watching their channel since the very early days, when I was still a student trying to figure out how everything worked. I learned a ton from Ryan Connolly and his team, so I'm really thankful to them. And I, it's just amazing to see how they've grown over the years. They are making some amazing short films at the moment. Their visual effects has gone from, from already here to, to out of the roof. It's beautiful to see that. They, those guys are my heroes, seriously. All right, and in the meantime, I see that the rotor brushing here is complete and it has done a beautiful job. If we go back to our composition, we can see now that it has been completely cut out. Now, what we want to do before we are going to continue is actually click here on the freeze button because right now this has just been rendered. It sits in the RAM memory of the computer. And once we're going to close and open After Effects again, that whole rotor brushing has to be recalculated. So that is why we're going to freeze that so that After Effects can memorize our mask or rotor brush. All right, the freezing is complete. That means that our cutout has been baked in and we don't have to worry about losing that anymore. So uh, there we go. The GPU is floating in the air. Now, one of the advices that I can give to you guys is if you have the ability to make a pre-render during your workflow, then do that. Right now, we've got the Roto Brush effect applied to the graphics card, and this slows down your workflow. Even though that the MSI P100 can perfectly handle that, as you can see here, it's actually playing back pretty smooth, but once we're going to apply more and more effects to it, things will start to slow down. So what I'm going to do real quick is actually render out this composition with only that graphics card here enabled. And I want to render this as a ProRes format, so QuickTime, ProRes, Apple ProRes. And you want to choose the 4444 <laughs> codec, press OK. And then from the channels, you want to choose RGB plus Alpha. And that way, the transparent background will also be rendered and you can just kind of replace your clip. So just press OK and we're going to render this out. So while that is rendering, I want to answer another question and that is how long does it take to complete a project? Well, first of all, that depends on the project, but we also have deadlines here at Cinecom. Every Friday we upload a new video and usually we start on Monday. So it takes about five days to complete that video. And that includes everything, starting from doing research to find an idea, 
trying out or testing to see if the effect actually works, making the scenario, starting to shoot everything, doing the visual effects, and finally rendering it out to publish it to YouTube. So, about five days. And in the meantime, my rendering of the floating GPU is done. I've got it right here in my project panel right now. And what I can just do is bring this into my timeline and delete or maybe for a moment just disable that layer. Maybe you want to go back into your rotor brush tool and you can always do that. A great tip, by the way, if you enable this little button right here to hide the layer and then enable the global hide option, it will actually just hide that layer so you don't have to worry about it anymore. If you want to bring it back, just click on that button again. So uh, let's just keep it there in the background. We normally don't need that clip anymore. So things are going to go a lot faster now because this has been rendered out and we can just work with the floating uh, GPU. All right, so that was step number one. Let's enable all of our layers again and let's start from the beginning. So we've got the computer which is closed. And what I kind of want to do is reveal the GPU that lays underneath, which is the layer underneath that. And we're going to start by just kind of let that GPU wiggle or bounce around to uh, create a power to jump out of that computer. So in order to do that, just simply click on the closed computer and I'm going to go to my mask and just kind of create a mask around that. But you see where my GPU is located. I'm going to disable that layer so that I can see the layer underneath, but I will keep my top layer selected where I'm going to draw that mask on. So just very roughly, because we're going to feather this afterwards, go around that GPU and that's it. You'll go into that layer or just double press M on your keyboard to bring up the mask properties. And we're going to start making a keyframe for the mask path in the beginning because this has a movement in it. And I'm just going to go all the way to the end because we do have a continuous movement. So normally it should follow along. So just adjust your mask and automatically it has created a second keyframe. So if we're going to play back this entire video, the mask should follow along very nicely. There we go. All right, let's enable that layer back. And as you will see, we're going to have to invert this mask like this. And now we've got this uh, cutout hole where we can see the GPU through. And of course, like I said before, you might want to feather that mask a tiny bit so that we don't have those hard edges here going on. But this looks pretty good, pretty nice. We've got the GPU coming through the PC. Now, this is a little bit too obvious. It feels like the GPU is kind of sticks in there. So we still kind of want to see the sides panel of the computer. So what I'm going to do next is just make a duplication of this layer. Hit Ctrl D on your keyboard. And from that layer, I'm just going to delete my mask like this. Open up the opacity with the T button on your keyboard and just kind of like decrease that and now you can kind of like fine tune how much of the GPU that you want to reveal. And you know what, let's perhaps animate that. So for the opacity, start at 100, go a little bit forward in time and then bring that, I know, to like 80%. That's up to you. And this way it will kind of like fade in the GPU revealing itself inside of the case. Now to make that GPU kind of like wiggle around, we're going to work with the open computer. If you want to solo out a layer, you can just click here on this little button here. And now we're only looking at that layer. And that way you can simply toggle between the different layers to see which one is which. So for the open computer, what I'm going to do is when it's starting to reveal itself, we're slowly going to let it start wiggle around. Now there are a couple of ways to do that, but because I want to have more control over that wiggle, I'm actually going to animate that manually. That is going to work out best here. Some might think, now you can also work with expressions. We've got the wiggle expression, but I'm not gonna work with that right now. So open up your position property, perhaps uh, collapse the other one for a moment. And we're going to start by creating a keyframe for the position for the open computer, which is the one that we can see through. And now we're just going to go like a couple of frames forward, hold down your control key, and then use your arrow keys to go one, two, three, I don't know, four frames forward, perhaps kind of like zoom in on your timeline a little bit here. And we're just going to like, like bring this clip a little bit upwards to the right, just kind of like offset that, go again a couple of frames forward. You can also just grab your clip right here, just bring that out to another place. And just continue doing this, just very randomly. A couple of frames forward, just kind of move that up. A couple of frames forward, you know, just continue doing this. A little boring work, but it's going to look really cool. And if you want to like make it shake more over time, what you can do is take smaller steps, maybe only go one frame forward and make a more drastic change. 
then again one frame forward and then another drastic change, etc. Now what you always want to do is play back what you've animated to see if it looks right and uh, if it doesn't then adjust. Don't always settle for your first keyframes. I'm just gonna add a few more in there so that it looks nice. And definitely by the end I'm going to make very big movements as you can see here. Just really drag that graphics card around. There we go. Let's play it back. Alright, this looks pretty okay. Maybe maybe it's a little too much by the end. I think it's okay. I think it's okay. So at this point right here, the graphics card is going to like float out. So actually for the last keyframe, I really want to move this GPU to the front. So that we have this last big bump before it's going to fly out. Looking good. Alright, what you never want to forget is to also enable motion blur, which you can toggle for each layer here. So let's enable that. And you will see now here that we get this natural motion blur as the GPU is wiggling around. Now rendering will go a lot slower while you have that enabled. So at all time you can disable that through the global toggle right here while you're working in After Effects. And if you want to preview how it looks with the motion blur and of course also when you're going to render it out on the final step, you want to enable that back. Alright, at this point we're going to cut the clip. So I'm just going to trim it back all the way to there. At this point, we don't need the GPU anymore. So uh, we can just cut to the next clip, which is going to be the empty computer. And that is already correct with the one that we have here laying underneath. Let's solid it out. This is what we want to see, of course, if the GPU flies out. And you know, at that point right here, it's also time for our floating GPU to shine. So I'm actually just going to move this up here. And you know what, I'm going to give this a little label color so we can uh, see that a little bit better, maybe red. This here is our alpha layer. And of course, we want to move that all the way to the top in order to see it. So at this point, we can have a look at this card. So also, I'm going to uh, trim that clip to start right at the point where our wiggle of the other card inside has stopped. And what I want to do is now create an animation of that card so that it kind of like rotates out of the computer. And you know what, because it goes so fast, we don't have to worry too much about the perspective of the card, it's going to work. So what I want to do here is now enable that layer as a 3D object, which gives me the option here, you can see here, to rotate that card inside of a 3D space. Now it's currently rotating around this point right here, which is the middle of the clip, but to make it work a little bit better for us, I'm actually going to move that anchor point up to the middle of the GPU. We can do that with the anchor point tool right here, and if we now move this axis right here to the middle of that card, you will see in a moment that we can rotate around that point. So now just take back your normal selection tool and now we can rotate beautifully around the cart. All right, this is the ending position. So the first thing that I'm going to do here, let's open up the properties for the, uh, the position. I'm going to create a keyframe for that and also the orientation because that is what we're going to change once we're going to rotate the uh, GPU around. Now this is my ending animation. So that's why I'm going to take these keyframes and move them up to the side. And now let's create the beginning part. And in order to do that, we're just simply going to, with the Z axis and everything, just kind of move this card back. I'm just going to trim out this open computer clip a little bit out. And you know what we perhaps even can do is solo this layer, the open computer, together with the uh, floating GPU. So now we can, uh, so now we can perfectly align our floating alpha clip here with the actual GPU inside. And what you can also do is decrease the opacity here to 50%. That way we can match them perfectly. So that's what you want to do right now. We're just going to like fumble around to uh, match these two. You want to rotate that. You can use any axis if you want. Just kind of match that up. Just go back and forward, you know, a couple of times to, to bring it in there. That's what, you know, visual effects is all about. It's not something fast. <laughs> it's something that goes uh, really slow. And I'm noticing that I also have to pull a little bit on the scale of that clip. So no worries. We can just enable a keyframe for the scale as well. Move this one here because scale 100 is the ending animation. So move that keyframe as well up to the right side. And I'm going to disable here that the scale has to have equal proportions. So that means that I'm able to stretch the clip out right now. We can do that here as well uh, on the Y axis. If we take this little uh, square right here, we can kind of stretch that clip out and really try to match it. 
That's the beautiful thing about the latest version of Adobe After Effects. We've got this new 3D axis, which is a control which we can do everything with now. We don't have to go into these properties anymore or anything like that. All right, you know what? This is looking okay for me because after all, we have a cut right there. We've got a very large movement, so it doesn't have to match perfectly. We are somehow at the same spot. So that is good. And if we take a look at this animation, you will see now that the cart will kind of like fly out like this. So that is looking great. All right, let's uh, deselect the solo property here. And I'm also going to trim this back to where it should end like that. So right now it should normally perfectly cut here in between. So that is looking great. Of course, the animation goes way too slow. So I'm going to move the last keyframes up here. And what you also want to do perhaps is uh, ease in these keyframes so that our animation doesn't stop suddenly, very abrupt. You want to kind of like, like break a little bit, slowly decrease your speed out to the last position. So, so just select these keyframes, right click, go over to keyframe assistant and choose easy ease in because the animation is coming in from the left side. And you know, let's just play this back a couple of times just to check and I think the speed is okay, perhaps a little bit faster. That's up to you. Now, of course, it still looks pretty stiff, but once we're going to enable the motion blur again, it's going to look a lot nicer here, you can see. And it's also going to hide those little mistakes that you might have. This is looking great. The only thing that I do notice right now is that my animation just kind of feels flat. You know, it still kind of like opens up like a door. So what I want to do now is kind of change the curve of that animation. Now, in order to do that, we kind of need a top view of our 3D space. Because after all, we have enabled this later here as a 3D object. So to do that, change your view right here to two view. And make sure that one of these, for example, the left side, just select that, is set to top. And now you can kind of see our animation line. It goes straight. That is not what we want. If we select any of these points, we also get a lever. And that way we can kind of create a more of a curve of this. So our cart sits kind of like straight into the PC like that. And it's coming out in this curve. It's following that line. And that is going to be a little bit better, a little bit more natural. All right, looking good. Let's go back to one view. And I think that we have the animation of that cart. You see here, it's kind of wiggling, shaking, like, get me out of here. I'm stuck in this computer. I don't want to be in there. Well, actually, we do need you, Mr. GPU, because without that, we, we, we can't play games. So we can't do After Effects or anything of that. <laughs> so you can come out for, for like a little moment here, just to say hi, but then you're going to go back in. But this is looking great. I love it. All right. Now, at this point where the GPU comes out, what I want to do with that side panel is so that it kind of opens up. So what I'm going to do here is use the closed computer layer, which is actually just a lid on the sides. And at this point where it comes out, I'm going to cut these two clips in half, have them both selected and just hit Control Shift D. And you can actually delete one of those. We are just going to work on one of them. What I'm going to do now is create a new mask here around the GPU, like on the inside a little bit on that layer with the closed uh, computer layer. Also, I can actually set this opacity to 100 for that layer like this because it's just going to break open from that point. So uh, we're going to also invert the mask. So hit MM on your keyboard, invert that. There we go. So what we have right now is we go from this uh, look through side panel here. We just cut back to just having the normal side panel onto it here with a small cutout. And what I'm going to do here is just animate that mask again. So for the mask pad, create a keyframe in the beginning, go a little bit forward in time. And once it has come out, I'm just going to open up that mask so that the whole side panel is gone. So uh, you can go a little bit out like this. There we go, looking good. And if we play this back, you can see here how that opens up. Now, to me, this line here is a little bit too too hard. And if we're going to feather it, that also doesn't make much sense. I kind of want to make that that edge more, more grungy. So here's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go into my effects library and I'm going to search for the roughen edges and just apply that to the clip. And you can see here what that does to the edge of my mask. Let's just disable here the outline so that we can get a better view of that. I can also increase the border of that effect to get a more grungy look. 
You can change the complexity as well to make it a little bit more sharp, like that. This is actually looking pretty cool. So now once playing this back here, you can kind of see more how that side panel is kind of like being eaten open by some chemical, I don't know. And there we go, guys. This is everything there is to it when it comes down to the animation. We got the GPU wiggling and the PC opening up once it has come out. That is everything. This is all we need, guys. There we go. Super easy. There's one last thing that is missing, and that is, of course, the blue glow that you saw as well in my video. Now, there are two steps. The first one is the glow inside of the computer, uh, where the GPU is kind of wiggling. He's building up his blue energy before he wants to burst out. It's a little bit of work, but it's actually super easy. What I'm going to do is create a new layer here on top, a new solid. And uh, you can just take like a black solid, doesn't really matter. And we're going to call this the, the GPU energy. Hit OK. I'm going to disable the output of that layer, but just keep it selected because I want to draw a mask on my GPU. And this is completely up to you what you want to highlight with that blue energy. But what I did was I went over all the blades inside and that way we can kind of make this animation where the energy follows the blades. So let's do that. Take the pen tool and just follow the blades like that. Click, there we go. Again, take the mask tool. So what you want to do is create a new mask for every blade. So you can very simply do that by pressing the V key on your keyboard to take back the selection. Just click on your layer, then hit the G key on your keyboard, and that way you got back your mask tool. And now you just continue creating masks for your blades. This is going to take a while. You know what? Let me just answer another question in the meantime. A great question that I got from MSI as well was, did you ever overcome a great failure and how did I deal with that? Well, uh, of course, yes. If you've been working for 10 years, of course, you, you have seen some kind of failure in your career. Um, now, I think this is something that, that we've all heard before. Um, like those people who are at, at the top, like an Elon Musk, like if you see any of his documentaries, he has actually gone through some serious failure as well. The same thing as Barack Obama, he actually lived in serious poverty, yet he became the president of the United States. So uh, those are some really cool success stories to, to hear. But their success was never possible if they never went through that failure. I think that in life, you do need failure to, to see what can go wrong and to learn from those mistakes. Because if you never make mistakes, you will also never learn. If I look back at my first projects, they looked very bad and I uploaded them to YouTube. And I'm talking about like 15 years ago or something in the very early days of <laughs> YouTube. And I had some really negative comments on that work. And at first you would think, well, just ignore the haters. But you know, even those haters can give you some valuable feedback because not always you're making good stuff. So I was just reading all those comments, trying to learn from my mistakes and I, I grew from there. So I don't try to see failure as something negative. I try to see it as something positive. Like I'm I'm actually happy. Like, yes, I made a failure. I can finally learn something new now and, and move on, make something better. All right, so all of my masks are in place and because I was so stupid to add a movement in there, what I'm gonna have to do now is actually uh, select all of my masks in my uh, properties and create a keyframe for the mask pads, like all of them all my 28 masks go forward in time where it starts to shake perhaps and uh, adjust my masks i have to animate them all so yeah this is time consuming so you see sometimes it's better to just shoot from a tripod <laughs> so that you don't have to go through all this work but hey it's looking better with the movement right yeah but luckily because it was motion controlled it is a one default standard movement so i don't have to change that much actually just a tiny bit here, here and there. Let's move on to the blue energy because that is what we're here for, not to animate masks. So <laughs> I'm just going to uh, enable that layer again with all the masks on and we can de-solo the open computer. And I'm gonna go to my effects library and this time search for the stroke effects. Now there are multiple ways to create a stroke, but this is one that I enjoy. And I'm going to apply that to the GPU energy layer which is our color solid 
and we're going to select from here all the masks. So we're going to draw a stroke, as you can see now here, over all of my masks. So that is great. And we're going to paint that not on the original image, but on transparent. And that way we are revealing the strokes on the computer. Now to animate these lines, what we can simply do is just animate the start and the end, as you can see here. Now at the moment, it's just going to like make the start from the first mask and then move on. If you want that, you can go for that. If you don't want that, you can also deselect your stroke sequently. So if you deselect that, it will now kind of like animate all the masks at once and kind of like energy open that up like this. So let's do that. Let's go to the beginning and I'm going to create a keyframe for the start. Move a little bit forward in time and then bring that back. And I think I'm going to press U on my keyboard to see all, all the keyframes. I should have placed my first keyframe a little bit more to the left to here somewhere. And this is going to be my ending so that it follows my animation of the mask path. So this is looking good. All right, so it comes in to here. And perhaps, you know, if you want, you can also like let it go out again. Um, for instance, if we are going to animate the ends now from 100 to 0, it goes back out. So you can see here how it kind of opens up and closes again. And I notice that I have to like move these keyframes up a little bit as well. A little bit to there. You see, VFX is all about that fine tuning. So it opens up and at the same time it's going to close. There we go. Right before the GPU is going to wiggle. Like if you want, you can let that follow as well with the wiggle, but uh, it's too much now. It's too much. <laughs> All right, which kind of color do you want? Maybe blue energy. You can change the color to anything that you want of that stroke. You can also uh, have that hardness a little bit less if you want to. But what I like to do more is add a Gaussian blur to that so that I have a little bit more control. Just increase that blurriness of the strokes like that. And of course, we want to blend that in a bit more with our shots. So uh, we're going to go to our layer properties, perhaps like uh, collapse this layer for a moment and change the mode to add. That way it will kind of like sit more into the shot. You can see it here, more part of it and it's looking great. So we already have this kind of like glow effect. It's looking a bit too clean in my opinion. So what you can do is again add that roughened edges to it. I'm actually going to apply this above the Gaussian blur because I first wanted to roughen and then I wanted to, to blur out. I'm going to decrease that border so that we can see it. But you know, that's going to take the edge off. You can see it very well here. We don't really have those straight lines anymore. There are gaps in, in between. Some of these lines are even gone, you know, a little bit more organic. And finally, of course, we're going to add a glow effect to it. So just search for glow. You know, I actually worked with the Red Giants uh, plugins, which is a paid plugin for After Effects. For this tutorial, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to work with a normal glow just to show you guys that you don't need to purchase additional software all the time. It makes your life easier. Yes, that for sure. But, you know, we don't always have that possibility to keep buying all these plugins. So just add that glow to here. You can see here, it kind of like gives a little bit more. You can tweak that if you like. So. Uh, maybe perhaps increase the radius a bit more, um, the intensity if you want to, like to have that glow more. But you know, this is basically it, you know, we got the glow in there, it's coming in, it's going back out before it starts to wiggle and then it just kind of like comes out. Now finally to top this off, we're going to add a little bit of lens flares to it. There are some great third party plugins again out there from Red Giants that I prefer. Uh, inside of uh, After Effects, you also have a built-in lens flare. It's not looking that great, but uh, let's work with that anyways now uh, for this tutorial. You can also work with stock clips. If you have a subscription to something like Storyblocks or another stock library, you can also download a flare from there, bring that into After Effects and work with that. But for now, let me just show you just the technique behind it. So I'm going to go over to Layer, New, uh, and again a Solid, and let's call this one Flare. Hit enter and we're going to add the lens flare, the default one from After Effects to that. Now we have this on a black layer now. So what I want to do is change the mode again to something like add, which is really going to bloom that uh, lens flare. And of course, what you want to do is change the lens type. Usually the 105 is going to work out best, definitely in this example, because it already is a little bit more blue. It also has a more softer uh, insight, which is great. If you want to change or tweak your lens flare, you can of course also do that with something like the U and saturation um, effect. 
that way you can kind of like say, look, let's, let's colorize this and let's change the U to something blue. Uh, if you want to like that, you can increase saturation as well as much as you want. Uh, you can also work with the Lumetri effect if you prefer that. That's again up to you. All right, now let's animate that lens flare. As you can see, we've got the lens flare center, that property which we can kind of animate and I kind of want to place it at the moment where the energy is going to start. So maybe we kind of disable that layer for a moment so that I can see better underneath. So right at here at this point, perhaps let's start at this side, perhaps. Flare center, create keyframe for that. Go a little bit forward in time and where it kind of stops, we're going to move that to the right side. So now we've got our lens flare going from left to right. Okay, enable that layer back and as we can see now, that lens flare beautifully follows. Now I do have to mention that this is an old effect from After Effects. It is not optimized to work with the GPU, which is kind of funny <laughs> because we're uh, we're sitting on on, uh, on the GPU. But uh, that way, these effects might go slower. If you actually go into your effects library uh, and just open up any of these, you can kind of see like a little icon next to it. Anything with this icon, like the set met effect right here is GPU accelerated. So those effects will almost go in real time. These will unfortunately not. And there's no computer that can make that go faster. It's just a limitation of software. So keep that in mind as well, guys. All right, this is of course a little bit too bright. So we're going to work with the flare brightness as well. And we're going to start, let me just open up the keyframes of this layer. At the first keyframe, that brightness can be zero and create a keyframe for the brightness, then go somewhere in the middle of your animation, bring this up to whatever you like, to 100 perhaps, maybe too much, 50? I think 50 is enough. Okay, let's keep it on 50, and then bring it on the end back to zero. So that way, the lens flare fades in and it fades back out. So let me just check this out. Let me just quickly render this and see how that looks. Uh, it's actually looking pretty okay. Look at that. Now it really feels like an energy going over that GPU. <laughs> Looking really cool. Also, when the uh, card is breaking out, you can again uh, animate a lens flare. You know what? Perhaps I'm just going to add another lens flare to that same layer. You can perfectly do that. You could also use the same lens flare effect, but uh, you know, just to keep it more organized, you can kind of rename that second effect as well to opening panel. And this might here be the GPU glowing. I don't know. That's up to you again. All right. So for this one, I'm going to bring that lens flare on the lid that is opening up. So one here on top. And I'm going to create a keyframe for the center. Go forward in time as it opens up. And right here, we're going to bring that center to there. So now it's just kind of like following that lit as it opens up. Now, instead of actually animating the flare brightness, uh, I'm going to animate the blend with the original because the flare brightness is also going to create a smaller dot. You know, actually, I might even want to increase this a tiny bit to, I don't know, 130 perhaps somewhere so that it's really bright and so that it spreads out more. What the blend option is going to do is it's going to keep that. You see here, it's going to keep that same size of the lens flare and just kind of like fade it in and out. So that is something that I'm going to work with with this animation. In the beginning, that blendness can be 100. Then create a keyframe for that. Go a little bit forward in time. Set that to zero. And then right before it's at its ending position on the end here, set that back to 100. So that way it's kind of like going to fade in more over time as that lit opens up. Of course, we also have a bottom part that is opening up. So perhaps we want to like duplicates that opening panel. You can, you can rename this one perhaps to uh, opening panel top. Always be organized, guys. Then duplicate that with the control D of duplicate and change or rename that the other one to bottom. And the only thing that we have to do is change the flare center animation. So I'm just going to delete that, go to the beginning and change my center here to the, to the bottom where the lid is opening up and create a keyframe for that. Go forward in time. And now bring that keyframe to the bottom. There we go. All right, let's render this and check it out. Wow, ah, look at that. I just want to break free. I, I'm just thinking about that song right now. That car just wants to break free. 
with his blue energy. <laughs> this is looking awesome. And so that was it guys for this tutorial video. I hope that you've learned something new. It's looking a little bit different than uh, what I made because I worked with third party plugins, but I wanted to show you that you can also create the same thing with built-in effects as well. It comes down to the exact same thing. All right, so I really hope to see your work as well in the MSI Creator Awards. Participate to win some awesome prizes and do know that the deadline is the 31st of May, so be fast to start preparing your work and uploading that to the MSI Creator Awards. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you, MSI, for letting me be part of this. I'm really honored and as always, stay creative.